Hi, welcome to the recording of the Sheep, Lamb and Wool Price Where To From Here webinar. This webinar was presented by Robert Herman from Mercado on the 29th of July 2020. This is clip 4 of 7 and covers sheep offtake, sheep meat prices, supply and market seasonality. There's one other chart that I wanted to put up and I, I may have spoken about this before but it's, it's something that's quite important. We look at sheep offtake and sheep offtake on this chart here, the orange line is the um, uh, sheep flock. You can see it's declining from 1990, from about 170 million down to the low 60 millions now. The green line, though, is the is the offtake, the the offtake of um, how many, what percentage of the flock we're slaughtering or exporting live. So when we're at this point here, we're exporting or slaughtering 10% of the flock. At, from 1990 onwards, we started to export and slaughter a huge amount of the flock as a percentage, so up to 16, 17%, which declined the flock. And then we had another decline as a result of drought, and we have sort of stumbled along down here. The grey area, or the light blue area, is times when we've been below 12% slaughter, and that's the times when we see the flock numbers rise. So we need to watch that because unless we go to below 12% of turnoff, 12% of slaughter or, or live export, the flock won't grow. It's interesting that we've also got the same situation in New Zealand where they've um, been declining for a lot longer since 1980. Now their decline wasn't because you know people wanted to get out of the wool industry, it was because of dairy taking over. But the same, uh, the same numbers um, result that when they're above 12%, their flock is in decline, below 12%, it'll rise. They are really at a very low ebb now. They're at, you know, in the low 20 millions of sheep, coming down from sort of 60 to 70 million sheep, and there's no sign of them recovering. Now, the reason we, we make the point about New Zealand and Australia in that context, that Australia and New Zealand are the only two countries that have any significant export impact for sheep uh, and lamb meats in the world. If the lamb and sheep mutton and uh, lamb and mutton market is going to be supplied in the world, it's going to be supplied by either us or New Zealand. And both with very low flocks indicates that the demand, uh, sorry, the supply is going to be tight going forward, and the demand we've talked about is going to support that. Sheep meat's quite a good story. The interesting part of this chart here, I think, is that we're seeing each year we see higher uh, higher highs and higher lows for lamb. So it's like that sawtooth going up the stairs. We've seen this this progression of, of higher higher prices each year. And, and even when the market stumble or, or comes under pressure in the spring from supply, the, the next year is a higher low than the previous year. So that's a really good story. And mutton's the same. Mutton's got had a, a, has followed along. Just keep in mind that at the same time, over that period of time, China has come from since 2011 when they were almost, you know, just a little bit play of about a, a million tonnes of sheep meat. Their growth in, in demand or in exports has come at a time when the prices have been going up. You know, with wool, when, when China started uh, buying a lot of Australian wool, it was when the market was on its knees. And, and we took a long time to convince them that they should be, um, you know, paying more. But with sheep meat, uh, they've come in at a time of strong prices. The other thing about supply is we think that the new season lamb supply is likely to be slightly higher than last year. Uh, the scanning rates are better in New South Wales. The winter conditions have been more benign, so we expect that more lambs have survived. Uh, the other factor is that we're, we're noticing, we, there's no measurement on this, but we're noticing that the, the lambs are much more advanced, the new season lambs are much more advanced than normal. And it would make sense. They've, the ewes have had a lot of feed. So we could see sales, um, if, if the season starts to cut out in New South Wales, we could see some good lambs come forward quite early. On the other hand, if we do, if the season doesn't cut out and continues along where those big licks of lambs come into Dubbo and Wagga early in the year and then further on down to Bendigo, those lambs could be delayed as producers put on more weight. So we think that's a supporting factor for the market because if the market does come under pressure as a result of the, um, you know, the supply coming on, then uh, producers where they're able to keep their lands on will be incentivised to take them on to heavier weights, so they'll take the price risk off. 
just finishing on lambs, the, the seasonality of lambs. You know, the market goes up through the winter, comes down in the spring. Now, the spring lamb downturn uh, came early this year, um, and it came early because of COVID. Now, we don't think that's a significant thing. We think that, you know, there's a lot of things conspiring to pull that down. You had very low supply, so exporters weren't, they were, they were already cutting back their, their shifts in the plants. You've now had um, plants close in, um, in Victoria because of uh, COVID problems. But I think, um, you know, by and large, uh, it, it's a pretty normal pattern. The, the one proviso is that what we can handle those abattoir shutdowns now because there's just no volume around anyway. But if, that, if this pattern continues and there's a problem with meatworks going in the spring when we've got peak lamb coming on, then that could be a real problem. Thank you for watching this short clip. For more information, please visit www.leadingsheep.com.au.